Let's get started. Eight o'clock, getting her on. We're doing a lot of uh, groundwork today just because my, my calves are unbelievably sore. So, so we're, we're still gonna get started with the warm up. I'm gonna take it slow on legs with everybody today. So we're a, a lot of groundwork later on, starting with core, moving into the upper body later on. All right, getting started with a high knee march. Get those knees up. Come for the profile. Again, knee lining up with the hip. That's what we're looking for. If you feel as though it's not a heavy enough warm up for you, feel free to take it to a jump. I'm going to stick with the march. Just because I want the hips warmed up, I just want the joint warmed up more so. On top of which, again, calves are unbelievably sore today, so don't mind me if you see a little squint on my face every now and then. All right, we're gonna move into butt kicks, nice and slow. Same thing as the high knees. If it's not enough for you, feel free to take it into a jaw. Get the arms moving with it. Models will start to warm up the upper body joints while we're getting the lower body joints in. We're gonna get a shuffle going in about five seconds. We're gonna do a double shuffle. So if you have the space for it, use it. If you don't, go for a single shuffle. So far side of my space. One, two, one, two. Same thing if you had a, if you only have this space for a single shuffle, it's just one over, one over. One. Good work. Awesome job. Again, see me squinting or you see me get quiet. It's only because I'm reflecting on, on bad decisions I've made with my calves. Went for a run that was a little over overkill for me. Body's paying for it. All right, we're gonna switch into some walkouts. So what we're looking for, feet at the beginning of your, of your space here. We're looking to fold at the hips and walk our hands out. The idea here is go as far as you can. So if the only thing you can get to is reaching for your toes and getting to here, that's okay. Feel free to cover the rest of the zone by bending knees and walking up here. If the walking up portion is too much for you, just more so, get down to your toes, bend to try and reach the rest of the way, and then stand back up. But walk out, going for five. Crawl up, and back in. That's one. Crawl up. Back in. Good work, good work. Crawl up. Almost there. Good start to our day so far. Last one. All right, we're getting some jumping jacks. Come up, expose the broad side. It's gonna be up and over. Good work, good work. I do question whether you guys can hear the music or not because I'd love for you guys to be doing the YMCA at home. YMCA is always a great warm up, especially when you're in the middle of jumping jacks. <laughs> awesome work. Great job. Moving into shadow boxing after this. So we're going to face my left, however it seems on your screen. Follow along with me. So feet on your toes, bouncing around just enough to get yourself driving forward and moving, moving the arms, starting with the, front, the back arm, then the front arm, as quick as you can. Arms up. Boom, boom. Jab, jab. Good work, good work. Great job, great job. Keep it up. Great warm up today, I hope. Friends catching up. You might see me change the mask because <laughs> again, like last week, I forgot. But I do have a disposable 
in my bed. So I'm looking to get that changed out as soon as possible. Let's get switched over to the other side after this one. All right, turn over. Again, back arm first, leading with the front arm, and then the following with the front arm. So up on your toes, jab, jab. Jab, jab. Good work. Well, at least it's a nice start considering it's fresh smelling after I just watched this. <laughs> the best. It smells a little bit like laundry detergent. I don't know how, that's good for, how, how good that is for my lungs, but we're here. Good work, good work. All right, almost done with the shadow boxing. Almost done with the warm up. Last two. Done. Woo! All right. Don't mind me. Good morning, Susan. Can I call you in there? We put on a disposable. There we go. Grab water as you need. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I I tore my legs a new one. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a lot of groundwork today just to cover whatever my legs can't. So whether that be easier leg work from the ground or core work or upper body work, a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing today is ground work. So get a comfortable space for you to for yourself today. Quick drink of water for me. All right. Starting on our backs. And you're here, per usual, starting with our bicycles. Just to go over demonstration. Actually, you know what? Just so I can see myself on camera, that way I know what you guys are seeing. Do, 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 do. There we go. All right. Bicycles, two biggest things, where you start your start your legs, whether you start them stretched, when you start them stretched out, or if you keep them bent and you're just doing little dips, doesn't matter. The idea is that the more bent your legs are, the easier this becomes. And the idea is that the further you straighten them out, the harder it becomes. So if you're doing bicycles with knees bent the entire time, it's just gonna be a dip down, dip down. If you're looking to get a full bicycle motion, range of motion, leg out, dip down, leg out, dip down. And then with the upper body, if you want to include it, you don't have to. The idea is lower body is where a lot of the a lot of is going to come anyways, is that the right remainder of the core work is going to come from the upper body, raising the shoulder off the ground, trying to get across your body to reach the opposite side. So full, so the idea of full range of motion for me here, if I have my left, my left leg down, I'm going to expose my back, the back of my shoulder, and reach across for that knee. You can see that the very, the very short distance here, you don't have to clang it down. But the idea here is shoulder off the ground, crosswise I'm squeezing. And I do with the other side, you can actually see my chest on screen here. And the idea, elbow comes as close to this knee as possible. You don't have to clang it. The idea is that the core works gonna be happy no matter what, so long as you're pulling across the body. All right, we're gonna start it in five. Pick your modification as we go. So the idea here is I'm gonna be doing full extension on the legs. I might be doing the modifications later on. We're doing three rounds of, of, the, of the core work here. All right, three, two, one, let's go. Take it at your own pace. I like to go slow simply because I like to find that squeeze. Like I was talking to you about the push-ups last week, actually, if you, show, if you joined in or you caught it on demand, the idea is trying not to look at the camera so much. I know it's easy to make sure to, to Hey, I might, is my form good? Is my form good? But I want you to feel the right form. These are as much as learning moments as they are teaching moments. The idea here is I'm trying to find a nice balance so that I can lay off my calves, lay off my legs, so I can still get my workout in. All right, more than halfway done. Let's go, let's go. Five, four. Three, two, and done. Good work. All right. 
Moving into my, into my second favorite motion. <laughs> going into the region pulls. Very similar motion, but the idea is that we're gonna move more so upward rather than crunching crosswise. So the idea here is where my feet are, this is gonna create the difficulty. So easiest is on the floor, easier, medium, hardest, trying to get, find a variation in between bent knee and straight leg. The idea is I'm gonna probably keep, keep it at bent leg for now. And if I feel like it, I'll move into straight leg. But what I wanna expose, very similar to the bicycles, is the back of the shoulder. The idea is I'm gonna reach up for an imaginary rope up here. I'm gonna grab onto it. I'm gonna pull it down towards myself. Don't forget this motion. I, I do want you to squeeze. I don't want you to sort of uh, throw your arm into the ground, but I do want you to pull down, squeeze in here, brace it, move into the other one. Brace it, brace it, good. So what we're looking for is reaching up, pulling the shoulder, pulling it down, repeating with the other arm. Let's go in three, two, one, ready, go. Pull, pull, pull. Good, good. Let's get it moving with this one. More core work to start the day. I hope that no one had a big breakfast or if you're catching this on demand later on, had a big dinner before you did this. <laughs> not, not always the best feeling of having food and then doing core work. All that extra squeeze in your gut, not the most comfortable feeling in the world. Good work, good work. Pass halfway now. Keep it up, keep it up. Let's go, let's go. Four, five, four, three, two, one. Down and done. Good. All right. So, not a lot of calf work involved in this one, but similar to last week, we're gonna do some. We're gonna do some glute bridges. Feel free at this point to grab weight if you have weight, and we're, I'm going to show you where to load it from, but you don't need weight to do this exercise. The idea here is that we're more so getting the mobility training out of it, but if you would like extra weight, feel free to grab it. So what we're looking for, heels are close to the bum, they're not exactly tucked up and touching, but the idea is they're close. The idea is that I'm going to be watching that my shins are parallel to the ground, are perpendicular to the ground. The idea is I want to stick them straight up. So, Easiest, just getting the bum off the ground and moving it from there. Medium, getting the bum fully off the ground and getting my, my legs and core flat. And then the hardest version is at the top. We're gonna kick one leg out. We're gonna dip down and at the, top, at the top again, we switch over. The idea here, down, you can see the level of my leg dipping down, flat as a board back up and then switch over. Where you would load the weight, is that right on the sort of uh, peak between your thighs, the, the mid parts of your thighs and your hips. I don't want you loading on your hips. I want you loading on the, on the sort of railroaded mus and muscles right here. You can feel them. You can see, you can dig into a little bit. You erect them. They're usually the one that sticks up the most. I want you to sit the weight right there. The idea is that belly's not a good surface. Hips are an okay surface, but sometimes people have a lot of tension in the tops of the tendons for their quads. So we want to leave it off of that, and we want to put a little bit more onto the quads, onto more, or more so onto the belly, the muscle. All right, we're going to get started in five. If you have weight, feel free to grab it. Pick your variation. I'm going to start with the medium variation, and I'm going to move on into the into the hardest variation. All right, three, two, one. Let's go. All the way up. There we go. You can actually see where my elbows are placed right now. Feel free to put your arms, your hands, anywhere they, pre they prefer. The idea is that they're trying not to be a driving force, but as you can see, I'm planting my elbows as if to create a little bit of a side-to-side -side stability. Okay, whatever you need to do. The main motion here come from the glutes and the hamstrings. The idea is every muscle that's going to make the hips extend and try to pull back. Good. I have really tight quads, so it's okay if you, if you do as well. You might even see how 
Later on, if I get starting to get weight somewhere and tear on me, my hips will start to turn over and dip more so into my quads. I want you to try and avoid that. I want you to be as flat as a board from shoulder to knee. All right, 10 more seconds. Let's go, let's go. Good work. Three, two, one, and down. Good job. All right. If you need water, grab it. I've been okay so far just because we're doing a lot of groundwork that it's more musculature than it is cardiovascular for me. But feel free to grab water now. I'm gonna move, be moving into the next round in about 30 seconds. Don't feel, don't feel free. To, <laughs> feel free to come in whenever you want. You don't have to be afraid about me starting without you. Come in whenever you can, get the work done, and we'll move on. Two more rounds of the, of the first round of core work, and then we're gonna move, be moving into more groundwork with the upper body and a bit more into the back as well. All right. If anything. Well, I guess I got, I'll tell you what, the groundwork is definitely working for my quads, or not my quads, my calves. Ugh. Body can learn to be angry with you. If you don't listen to it, it's gonna make you listen. It's gonna, it's gonna scream in your ears, except the scream is done is a list, is soreness and pain. <laughs> At least take that with a grain of salt. It should, it should never be pain. It should be more so discomfort or soreness. The idea is if you're peg-legged walking up the stairs, that's normal. If you feel as though your ankles are going to snap, that's not normal. Please take care of yourself and don't mind me doing stupid stunts. All right. We're starting with the bicycles. Come in whenever you're ready. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing legs only to start, and then I'm going to be moving into the crunch motion. So the idea here is that even if I was doing so just the dips, leg dips alone, or if I was doing the full extension, it's just legs alone on this one. Core is trying to fight the weight of my legs being dropped down and been pulled back up. I'm not going to be doing the upper body until about halfway through or more, or I might do just do it next round. So three, two, one, let's go. When it comes to bicycles, if you have a little bit of hip hop emotion or if you have a hip hopping feeling, I know I do. It's just, be, it might be because your hips are a little too tight. It might be because you need, we need to stretch them out. It might be because that your core is too tight. There's a lot of reasons for it, but don't think it's not normal to have popping hips. So long as it's not uncomfortable or it's painful, you, you, you'll be fine. The idea here is that about halfway down, I don't know, you definitely, you definitely can't hear it, but you'll, you might see my leg twitch a little bit. That's where my hip pops out and, and tries to sink back in. It's just because I have really, really tight hips. I, I do need to focus on stretching a little bit more, especially considering I've been increasing weights. And as you, as you, if you tuned in earlier, my runs have been a little longer and pushed myself a little too far. So tightening up my hips is something very normal. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Good work. All right. Staying on the ground here. More core work. The idea here is either feet on the ground, bend knees up in the air, or kick the legs straight up. The idea is pick your, your, your difficulty. Legs on the ground is the easiest. Easy, hardest. And then every variation in between. All right. And the other big motion, exposing the back of the shoulder. If you have, if you have a cold house and you're on, on any sort of hard floor, you will feel a breeze just sort of dust across your back. That's what I want you to feel. But if you're just on carpet or anything, it's more so just picking up the shoulder as much as you can. Okay. I'm gonna raise my legs a little higher this time. What I'm looking for, reach and pull. All right, three, two, one. Let's go. Squeeze. 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 Good. Turn the body, turn the torso, expose that shoulder. Good work, good work. Great start, great start. 
And ever, another difficulty measure that you can use, which I didn't explain earlier, is you, if you feel as though this reaching motion is a lot, especially around the core, you're picking up a lot of your torso. Feel free to shorten the range of motion and lay that shoulder fully on the ground before you reach for the next one. Get yourself, catch yourself and breathe. Good. All right. Definitely more than halfway now. Five, four, three, two, one. Good. All right. I'm going to move into the edge of my mat simply because I like my feet flat on the floor for bridges. If again, if you have a weight, load it a little bit more closer to the quads. The idea is there's a nice, there's a nice big space where the railroad starts. What we're looking for is hips off the ground is fully off the ground or hips off the ground with one leg and switching at the top. All right, I'm gonna be doing the switch now. Let's see if I remember to, to alternate as I go. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Good work, good work. Like I was talking about last round, you might even notice me. If you if you are looking at me, you don't have to. And like I was saying earlier, try not to. Um, if you do if eventually notice that my hips start to curl, that's because my hips, my hips and my quads are super tight. <laughs> and it's just because I have a tendency to put the load into my lower back versus into my glutes and into my hamstrings. Very normal. Very normal in men and women. Good work, good work. All right, we're halfway done. Good job, good job. Squeeze those glutes down and up. Really get really proud with the chest, proud with the torso. And if you're doing the leg variation like I am, really kick that leg out, try and get it straight. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work. Great second round. We have one more round of that. And then we'll move into our final round of upper body and back. Still doing groundwork though. <laughs> Hopefully you haven't seen my squinting face when I, when I walk up to the camera and my, my calves really just scratch into me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go a little more gung-ho with the with the final round, I'm gonna give a little, very little explanation, just more so gonna give you which, which exercise we're doing. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna go through them quickly. All right. Stay on break if you, if you need extra time. I'm gonna get started in about 10 seconds, starting with the bicycles. I'm gonna stick with leg variation. And if I'm focused enough, I'll move, I'll move into the upper body and lower body coordination. All right. Three, two, one, go. Good work, good work. Just to promote the idea of not looking at the camera and more so going by feeling, just want to excite you. <laughs> Congratulate you if you're trying it. If you still need the coordination and the copy motion, still good work. Good work in trying. Good work in trying to figure out the motion as best you can for yourself when you do them later or when you do them to the on-demand video. All right, 
Ooh, the crunch must is getting to me. <laughs> Ooh. Five, four, three, two, one. Woo. All right. Going into the reaching pulls. Give myself five seconds to breathe. Find a good spot for my legs. All right. Three, two, one, go. Good work, good work. Again, like I was saying, last round's a little more gung-ho, less explanation, more doing. Good work, good work. Ten seconds left. Come on, come on. Three, two, one. Good work. All right. Tuck myself on the end. Find a good spot for my hips. Again, last thing is shit is perpendicular to the ground. Bridges. Three, two, one. Up and down. Good work. Good job, good job. I'm actually gonna rest where my, my hands were. I would like your weight to be, if you have some, the idea. Just underneath the hips, my hips are up here, just underneath, and the big belly muscles up here. So the little railroad I have where my tendons and where the muscle belly starts, that's where I'm loading up, right here. Good work, good work. Almost there, almost there. Perfect, perfect. Five, four, three, two, one, done. A little more gung ho. Hopefully, you didn't drink too much water. Grab water now. Catch your breath if you need to. We're going to be moving into two, excuse me, two upper body exercises. The idea is we're going to be doing some knee push ups. So, pick where you'd like to do them from, whether it be the wall, the, uh, the, the uh, window ledge, or in my case, a bench, some stairs, a couch a chair, any variation more so, where you can actually brace your hands down into, and then on the floor doing on the knees or from the toes. That's what our first exercise is gonna be. I'm gonna be moving into it in about 15 seconds. Take your time. I'm gonna more so try to explain it before we get into it, but take your break. So, if you're doing the wall variation, straight from your shoulders, shoot out, walk the feet back enough where you're, you're actually bracing against the wall, and then I want your hands to end up somewhere between your chest line and your chin. If they end up close to your forehead, move the hands down just slightly and then go for another one. Same thing with any sort of window ledge, chair, anything like that. Use the palms, use the big meaty part of your palms and your wrist to brace right into the corner of whatever you're, you're going up against. And then it's down towards it, up into the sky. Same place aiming as, as you go on the wall, chest and chin. And then lastly on the ground, whether you're doing it from knees or toes, hands right underneath the armpits. And then I want to, whether I'm going for my knees or for my toes, I want to be as flat as a board from my head down to my heels. All right, I'm gonna get started in about five seconds. Follow me in when you're ever ready. Starting from the ground, I'm gonna be starting from my knees. You can start wherever you need to. Take your modifications as you need, your own race, your own pace. Broken record as, as always. All right, three, two, one, let's go. A lot of when it comes to push-ups is posture and pressure over the chest and the back of the arms. Focus on which joints you're using here, using your shoulders and your elbows. Your wrists are planted to a certain situation, same thing with your knees. So they're more so going for stability and more so 
for overall strength. But pecs and triceps are going for that enduring strength, the muscular endurance. Good work, good work. Don't mind me looking at the camera more so. Just want to keep you engaged. Awesome work, awesome work. Again, if you can, try and feel out the exercise. Five seconds left. Three, two, one, done. All right. We're moving into, so stay on the ground. You're laying flat on your belly. We're gonna do some Superman, Superwoman's, whatever you wanna call them, back extensions. What we're looking for is squeezing from the mid part and upper part of my back. I'm gonna try and avoid squeezing from the low part of my back here. But what we're looking for in terms of motion, starting from the ground, whether your hands are right beside you, out in front, or one or the other, what we're looking for is that starting from the ground, you squeeze from the upper and the middle back to bring yourself up off the ground and then lower back down. I want you to watch my arms if you get the chance. You can see how they raise up and off the ground. There's this whole space under here and now it's flat again. That's what I'm gonna be looking for. We're gonna get started in five seconds. Three, two, one, let's go. Upper middle back, down on the ground. Upper middle back, down on the ground. If you do feel it start to sink into the lumbar, that's okay. It's very normal to squeeze from where you would be strongest and where the muscles would be the tightest. But I want you to try and squeeze from that mid back and that upper back. Good work, good work. Hard for me to talk with all my lungs being squeezed up by the ground. But I know that you're doing great. Don't mind the little signs that I have. Good, good. Good work, good work. Five, four, three, two, one. Great work. We're gonna do one more round of that, and that'll be the end for today. The idea, upper body, going for that chest, going for the backs of the arms, focusing on the shoulders, and the elbows moving, and then to the back. Grab water now if you need it. I'm gonna be hopping into the exercise in about 30 seconds, coming in whenever you're ready. One thing I want you guys to try, especially if you're if you're new to practicing on push-ups, try and get your hands below your chin line. The idea is that the further your hands start to sink up, the harder it's going to become, and the more you put it more so into, into the fronts of your shoulders. I want you to use the largest muscle groups that you have, so like your chest and your triceps in this case, and a little bit in the back of the shoulder. The idea here is that the more you throw your hands up, the more the, the, sh the shorter the range of motion is going to get. Same thing if I start to plan out too wide, the shorter the range of motion is going to get. This will be easier than this, but this will be just as hard as doing it down here. And I want you to try and keep it in the proper position so you can keep going and keep practicing them. All right, push ups. Doing it from wherever you can. Focus on arms, hands straight under the armpit. And we're not going too wide. We're going to try and keep that fixed position, as well as not try to raise the bum up too much. Trying to keep it flat as we can from head to, to knee or from head to heel. All right, three, two, one, I'm going. Good work, good work. Great job, great job. Great work. 
Try not to lift the camera so much. Try and feel out a proper push up and try and get as much depth out of it as you can. I don't mind if it's controlling the way down and you need to slump back up just to hold, hold yourself back at the top, but I want the control coming from somewhere. The idea here is that if you need to do some anti push ups or some negative push ups, as we call them, and you need to get on the ground and you need to reset by pushing your bum back, that's okay. The idea is upper body's trying to get the motion in. We're squeezing from wherever we can. Five more seconds. Three, two, one. Good work. All right. Down on the bellies. And again, try and feel out for the upper back and the middle back. It's okay if it starts to sink in the lower back. It's normal, but we're going to try and move that pressure up. All right. Down on the ground. Oh, just because I didn't, I don't think I mentioned which was harder and which was easier. Easier is when the hands are closer to the body and you're talking in a little bit more. And even if they're still on the ground, try and raise that back up. That's going to be our easiest version. Our hardest version is going to be good at getting the full extension with our hands way out in front. So I'm going to be sticking right in the middle. I'm going to put my hands just halfway up and I'm going to try and get my shoulders and my back squeezing chest off the ground. All right, three, two, one, last round. Let's go. Good work, good work. Again, if this is too much for you, feel free to plant your hands down. Keep the back working. But hands are there for support just in case they need it. Hard dispersion, hands straight up. Bring a lot of torque and a lot of weight on the end, especially if you have big arms. You got big arms, you know they're going to add weight to you. I am, <laughs> I am compact, <laughs> I guess is the best way I should put it. <laughs> I, I do have. A little bit of a slimmer structure, but I'll tell you, I'm as dense in my, in my muscles as I am dense in the head. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Five, four, three, two. Good work. Great job today. Thank you, Glenn, Michael, Lisa, Susie, all tuning in. <laughs> and whoever shows up on demand. Thank you for coming and thank you for sticking through it with me. <laughs> thank you for the extra, extra, extraordinary amount of groundwork that we did today and for sticking with me to help help my legs out today, considering the, the, the little dumb stunts that I pulled. <laughs> All right. Have a, great, have a great day.